Mississippi State before arriving on the 40 acres. Home whites for the top seed, Cardinal. And the burnt orange of Texas for a spot in the final four. And Hansey on the perimeter and the quick foul called on Deanna Gaston. Okay, that's setting the tone right here, right? I mean, this is a physical, aggressive, hard-nosed Texas D. And Stanford likes to pass and cut. Texas needs to make them play off the bounce. D. Kantner, McCall Murray, Kenneth Nash, the officials. Cameron Brink off the mark in the regular season matchup. The card were an abysmal 4 of 27 from downtown. As we take a look at tonight's Capital One starting lineups, Joanne Allen Taylor saved the day when Rory Harmon got into foul trouble yesterday. She is the lone returning starter from their late eight team a year ago. Multiple ball handlers to initiate the offense for Stanford will help alleviate some of that full court pressure that they will see all game. Wilson and Lacey Hall will split the point guard duties. The other three are the scorers. Brink, Haley Jones, and Lexi Hall. They combined for 51 points and 27 rebounds a couple of nights ago in their Sweet 16 win. And Beth, keep in mind that as good as Stanford is offensively, I think their defense is a little bit slighted. They do have two Pac-12 defensive players of the year on the floor, Anna Wilson and Cameron Brink. They really took Maryland out of their offense and a block shot there for Haley Jones. When we talked to Tara Vandermeer at practice yesterday, she said we cannot let them do what they want to do on either end of the floor as Brink goes strong to the bucket. Wow, there was a lot of contact on that. Okay, shooters in the corner, operating in the middle third. Nice roll. Look at all that contact. Wow. wow. That's a foul. That was big there because that would have been two immediately on Gaston, but no call. Brink. Defended by Lauren Ebo. It's a Texas defense that has been allowing just 56 points per game in the postseason. They don't just turn you over, this Texas D. They make you play faster and uncomfortable. They, Stanford's going to have to be able to make plays off the bounce tonight against this defense. Harmon, who scored 21 in the regular season showdown. Stanford had no answer for the Longhorn guards in that matchup. Gaston short on the shot, Anna Wilson with the box out. Now in her sixth year and her 159th game for Stanford. Jones spinning in the lane and that one will drop. And there's the All-American, the Pac-12 Player of the Year, Haley Jones at 6-1. She can score, she can facilitate, she's a terrific decision maker in the full court. Quiet in the first two rounds and then the other night flirted with a triple-double and showed her true colors. Harmon hangs off the front of the rim and Brink's got it. High hands on that switch by Haley Jones and you have to affect the vision of Rory Harmon. She's really good in the mid-range. Jones, spacing wasn't right there for Stanford. They'll get five on the perimeter. Lacey Hull will drive it. Spins to the left hand and uh, neither side shooting it particularly well to start out. A combined one for nine. Here comes that dribble drive, Beth. They like to play through the nail, which is the middle of the floor on the free throw line. Good step through from Alan Taylor. Yeah, that nail on every basketball court in America and fast break opportunity right there and one for the Cardinal and Alexi Ho. Well, it's a great look ahead, and one way to beat the pressure is to go long, and that's exactly what Hall does here. Good find up the floor, great finish through contact. Ashton Preptil will check in here for Stanford. It looks like Cameron Brink lost a contact lens. She heads over to the sideline to fix that. One of the versatility parts of Stanford is their ability to bring depth off the bench and specialists like Prechtel at 6'5", who's a tremendous three-point shooter. 
as Harmon brings it across midcourt. Let's uh, send it over to Angel Gray. Well, ladies, Rory Harmon came into this ball game with a renewed focus because she didn't have the Sweet 16 debut she wanted, but she plans on bouncing back against a team she already found success against this season. You mentioned it. She had 21 points in their upset win over Stanford, and that essentially put Rory on the map. As far as tonight, though, Rory said she knows what adjustments she needs to make, and she needs to be the floor general. The Longhorns need to advance. You know, she gets the bucket there and immediately into defensive mode. I mean, that's a tough two right there. Hand in her face. Anna Wilson did an exceptional job defensively. But, you know, I like good offense. Offense beats defense most of the time. Lacey Holt kicks it out to Haley Jones. Cracked the weak side, and it came right down into Rory's turf. And she locked it up. They'll get possession here. Uh, what Angel was referring to, Harmon was in foul trouble all night in the Sweet 16 and then came up with a big basket, two key free throws, and a block shot late in the game to seal it in a three-point win. She only played 21 minutes, and she averages 30, and she's really important to their success here tonight. Alan Taylor again, Debbie, getting into that nail for the bucket. That dribble drive action, so they'll... They'll switch that, Stanford will, and, and look how deep Texas gets on that dribble drive inside the paint. They are a really good mid-range two-point shooting team. Jones, the back door, Wilson. Oh, they do that so well. Textbook from Stanford. It's tough to defend that. Haley Jones makes that pocket pass as well as anyone. You dribble at the defender, and then you go back door. It's very well set up. They've assisted on over 60% of their baskets so far in the tournament. Wilson rebounds, heads up. Hold to hold for two. Go back door, exit cut quickly, get your feet underneath you. Defender falls down. I love a good exit cut for a shooter. And Taylor with the pull up. All white jerseys around the rebound. Jones. Gaston was able to hold her ground, and it's going to be a foul on Lexi Hull. And the early Stanford lead. Up the line, overplay, no problem. Stanford back door. Anna Wilson for a bucket. Stanford with the early lead. Beautiful shot of the Spokane River downtown, just next door to us, Riverfront Park. Beth Bowens, Debbie Antonelli, Angel Gray, Elite Eight matchup, the one seed Stanford, the two seed Texas. And uh, Anna Wilson's uh, brother, and there's his mom just to the left of him there, and there's Tammy. And uh, Anna in the starting lineup, former Pac-12 defensive player of the year, five Pac-12 championships and one national championship ring. Working on an exit strategy to try and get another. That's the first pass to the low post for Vic Schaefer coming off the timeout. He's trying to get Ebo going. Number one inside, the 6'4 senior who brings tremendous size to the low block. Brink looking for Belibi, and she's fouled in the lane. Winner of this one will move on to the final four and a date with the winner of tomorrow night's UConn NC State game. What a job NC State and Westmore have done. You know Westmore and Gino Ariema have never met as head coaches. Uh, this will be a fun one. NC State yep. survive in advance. The Wolfpack will be trying to get back to the Final Four for the second time back in 1998 under legendary head coach Kay Yao. They beat Connecticut in the region final to move on. And, of course, you know the story for the Huskies. They've been to 13 consecutive Final Fours. 
and have not lost a game in the NCAA tournament in the Northeast since 2006. That's 45 wins in a row. It is a tall task for the one seed in Bridgeport, no question about it. But NC State has the most wins they've ever had in the program. They have a veteran experienced group that I think somewhat was sleepwalking through their game against Notre Dame, and they're going to need to pick up that effort if they're going to have a chance to beat Connecticut, who is favored as the two seed yes. in that matchup. That doesn't sound just like an analyst. That also sounds like a, a, a little bit of alumnus in there. Well, they better play better if they're going to win. <laughs> Free throws good for Texas. Hey, the NCAA Women's Championship continues. There it is. Tomorrow night, the first game of the doubleheader, UConn and NC State, followed by the Michigan Wolverines. They're in a spot they've never been before, trying to get to the Final Four for the first time against the one-seed Louisville Cardinal. Jeff Walls has them rolling again. A lot of chalk in the women's Elite Eight. And one of the one-seeds has already advanced South Carolina. Yeah, don't be sleeping on that Louisville team now. On the other side of the bracket, that's an elite-level defense. Jeff Walls is terrific this time of year in crafting a game plan. And congratulations to Dawn Staley in South Carolina. What a great job winning the Greensboro Regional. Lacey Hull with the block. Stanford on the move. And an offensive foul will be called on Fran Belibi. Aliyah Matharu was there to take the charge. I think she was outside the restricted area, and of course Tara Vanderveer thought that was a flop. Third turnover for the Cardinal. Well, what a good job of jumping on that right hand by Anna Wilson off that screen. There's a switch. Now you gotta have high hands right here. Bechtel still defending on Harmon. Matharu. Three on the shot clock. The drive inside and one. Late on the help and what a finish by Aaliyah Moore, the 6-1 freshman. I mean, she's turning the corner right here. No stopping more on the way to the bucket. The number six rated player out of high school, according to ESPN W. And she is a handful to deal with. She can score in that mid range. She's good in the low block. She's a tremendous rebounder for Vic Schaefer. Amo was out seven weeks with an ankle injury. Never really got back into full form until the postseason. Last weekend in the first and second round, she had back to back career highs. And what a job, what an impact this freshman class has made with her and Rory Harmon. And a five-second violation forced by the Texas D. I don't think Vic Schaefer likes anything more than that right there. Five-second good defensive effort. Everyone denying one pass away. Stanford, you, you can't try to catch the ball on the baseline, Beth. You're going to have to be able to stretch that defense a little bit. Fourth turnover forced by Texas. Here's Rory Harmon. Gets into the body of the defender, creates some space. Matharu, offensive rebound. Jones snatched it away in a foul. And a little tug of war with last okay. year's Final Four MVP and Matharu. You know what? This lineup on the floor right here is the one that I love for Texas because he's got three quick athletic guards. Five, 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 four. Maybe five six, maybe. And they are athletic <laughs> and they're quick and they love playing D and they love playing together. 57 points per game. They're holding opponents under 45% shooting in the tournament. Out in front and a fifth turnover for Stanford on the pass intended by Iriathan. Okay, so you got to sprint to the rim, but you got to know if Ariafin can make that catch, right? Because Hannah jumps on the floor also. So I'm looking for Hannah jump to spot up when you break that pressure. That's the danger of pressing Stanford is backside scoring if you can get past it. 
jump is the three-point threat. Now they got a mismatch yeah. inside. Matharu floats one up and in. Nope, take it away. Offensive foul. And that will be the second on Aliyah Matharu. Now this time the rotation is on time. Matharu could have had the dump down pass to Ebo right here. Look at Anna Wilson. That is a tremendous defensive job. She's fronting the post. She sees the penetration. She gets off that contact, gets her feet set. You referee the defense in that situation. That is a tremendous play. Texas is getting the turnovers, Debbie, but they're not cashing them in. Five takeaways, but just one basket off of those. You know what, Beth, though, it's okay because it's an overall wear down factor for 40 minutes. Now Wilson on the miss. Allen Taylor transition three, got it. And when Texas can score, they can bring the heat. Jones drives down the right side, in and out. Kept it alive, got her own miss. Look at the hustle on the glass by Haley Jones. They destroyed Maryland on the offensive boards the other night, and that was one of the priorities for Texas. Limit those second chance opportunities. Right now, the Horns are enjoying an 8-0 run and a four-point lead approaching the final minute of this first quarter. Latasha Lattimore, the 6'4 freshman from Toronto, will check in. And Iriafin to the free throw line, just a 54% proposition on the year. Tara Vanderveer going much deeper earlier into her bench tonight than she did the other night against Maryland. They got way out in front in their Sweet 16 when led by as many as 26 before the Terps closed the gap late. After Rory Harmon had that big game on the road at Stanford in just her second college basketball game, it was like, hello, Rory Harmon, you can certainly play. Big 12 freshman of the year, their tournament MVP en route to the championship, and a, uh, an honorable mention All-American in the Associated Press. I mean, she is lively. Vic Schaefer likes some of those small guards. He's had a few in his time. Mm. And they get a two-for-one opportunity. Let's check in with Angel. Well, guys, there seems to be a trend with Coach Schaefer's guards over the years. Going back to his time with Texas A&M, 5'6", Sidney Carter, Big 12, all-defensive team and NCAA champion. Morgan William at Mississippi State, 5'5", hit the legendary shot to upset UConn. And then you also have Rory Harmon, 5'6", the Big 12 tournament most outstanding player. She said she chose Texas because of how Coach Schaefer developed small guards and built their schemes around that type of two-way player. She said bringing defensive intensity is a requirement under Vic. She also told me it doesn't just go with Coach Vic's guards, but also that she's being mentored by Ari McDonald with the Atlanta Dream right now. She was also the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year her senior year. Well, I'll tell you what, Morgan William, we know you're watching. You might have hit the <laughs> shot in the history of college basketball that year for sure, or maybe overall in the tournament mm -hmm. when Mississippi State took down UConn in the Final Four. Of course, Ari McDonald led Arizona to the championship game last year. Well, that was 2017, the year that South Carolina beat Mississippi State in the championship. Gamecocks are back in the Final Four for the fourth time under Don Staley. Seeking a second national title. They will face the winner of the Louisville-Michigan game tomorrow night. Michigan's never been before. They are the last of the uh, four Big Ten schools that reached the Sweet 16. Louisville, one of the four ACC teams in the Sweet 16 this year. Final seconds of this first quarter.
So far, the Texas defense winning the first round against the Stanford offense. Jones, got to hurry, gets it up, good if it goes. Haley Jones beats the buzzer. And the Cardinal tie it up. Take the shot clock down. Get it to your All-American. Clear it out. Everyone go to the other side. I got this, Haley Jones. I'm joined by Coach Schaefer. Coach, after that first timeout, we saw a different bounce from your team defensively. You got four consecutive stops. What was the biggest difference? Well, I mean, we're just kind of settling in. I mean, it's a long game, so first game, first the first two four uh, five minute games are over. Got a tight ball game. We got six more to go, I think. Good math, Coach. All right, <laughs> thanks, Beth. Yeah, fourteen apiece. And Vic Schaefer in very good company with the uh, five Elite Eights. Uh, the only folks that have done it faster are Hall of Famers. Leon Barmore, Pat Summit, Jody Conrad. And then Vic, three Elite Eights with Mississippi State, five, uh, two more with Texas. In his uh, seven years as a head coach. Joan Bonvicini, another good one out west back in the early days. And there is Coach Conrad. She's hoping that the Longhorns will get back to the Final Four uh, for the first time since she was on the sideline, Debbie, back in 2003. Yeah, that was a great team she had in 2003 that made it all the way to the Final Four. Of course, she's won a national championship in 1986, the first undefeated season in the history of women's college basketball. 900 career wins. She got that in the Big 12 tournament one year, and, and that was it. Done. That was Jamie Carey and Stacy Stevens, Ty Dillard, and Heather Schreiber all on that she, team. She might shoot her age in golf now. She's on the course a lot. Stat sheet uh, has the score tied, but Debbie, it certainly looks like a Texas win through the first 10 minutes. Uh, with their tempo, more turnovers than baskets for the Stanford yep. offense. No threes for Stanford, yep. and they have to make plays off the bounce. And they are a team that likes to pass and cut. They like to keep it pretty. And Texas has made it actually gritty. Harmon, seen a lot of this business from their guards, pulling up at the free throw line for the 15-footer. Rory Harmon's got four points and an assist so far. Well, I mean, you keep going to that dribble drive and you keep running it until they stop it. They have not been able to stop it. Jones, Cameron Brink has checked back in. She only played three and a half minutes in that first quarter after picking up a foul, and they are out of sorts yeah. on the offensive end. Uncomfortable, not communicating, not being able to run their stuff. Texas has taken away their first option, which is they love to throw it into the pinch or the elbow. That's how they like to initiate their offense. Audrey Warren has checked into the Texas lineup. She's got it up top, just inside the line. And over the back, going to be called here on Natasha Lattimore. That's her first. Natasha Lattimore only played about four minutes in that game versus Ohio State. So she's getting an early look here tonight. She's long and athletic. Another freshman, 6'4", who can defend. The holes and Haley Jones doing most of the ball handling full court so yes. far. Anna Wilson's really not on top of the floor very often. And I think part of the reason is because Rory Harmon is such a good on-ball defender. Knocked it loose there briefly. Shot clock's under 10, and they haven't even gotten into their play yet. Brink spins in the lane. Mid-range Jones. And Brink with the board. Hull. Harmon's got it, and Cameron Brink just picked up her second foul. And that may be it for the first half for her, oh, yeah. all of five minutes on the floor. Yeah, she's not coming back now. I mean, 
Now, Audrey Warren is not going to blow you away with speed or quickness, but she's going to play hard and tough. Right there, you see Brink just shoves her out of the way. So you can't pick up a cheap one like that if you're Cameron Brink. Cameron had a double, or uh, averaging a double-double through the first couple of rounds of the tournament. She fouled out of the Sweet 16 game. Look at Texas, good fight on the glass. Oh, okay. Kelly Ball will keep it at this end. All right, here it goes. The more stoppage, more whistles, the more physical, the more bodies that hit the ground. This is favoring Texas. Not loose. The whole sisters tumbling on that. They're back in their hometown here in Spokane where they starred for the Central Valley Bears about 15 minutes east of Spokane Arena. Open look for Anna Wilson. Fran Belibi, second chance. Third chance and a foul as Jones got hit from behind. I'll tell you what, Haley Jones came to play. She's played with toughness in the first half. She's been on the glass. She's had ball handling responsibilities. She has impacted the game in a lot of ways already in the first half. That was the second foul on Lattimore. She departs. Jones, 81% at the line this year. Hey, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Final Four begins Saturday at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on TBS. For more info, go to NCAA.com. Of course, the Men's Final Four set. You know, blue Bloods all over the joint. Down in New Orleans, Debbie. They're including for the first time in tournament history, Duke and Carolina. Oh, boy. Whew. Can't wait. I bet about 25 million people are going to watch that one. <laughs> Old State will be tuned in for sure. And prior to that, it's Villanova and Kansas. So we know that Mike Krzyzewski will be at the men's Final Four. Will Tara be at the women's? They are two legends of the ball, the winningest coaches of all time. Mike's got over 100 tournament wins. Tara is approaching that. They have combined for eight national championships. And, of course, Krzyzewski's swan song as he moves on to retirement after the Final Four. What an incredible run by the Blue Devils to be able to get to the Final Four in Coach K's last year. And the way the players feel about Coach K is exactly the same way the Stanford players feel about their leader, Tara Vanderveer. Tara in the Elite Eight for the 22nd time. The Carter 13 and 8. Well, this is the first time we've seen them go away from the dribble drive and they go to their horn set. So they're trying to get high low and get their post players involved with this lineup on the floor for Stanford. Five on the shot clock. Harmon bothered by Jones. Got a jack here. Good if it goes. Got it for three. She is so tough. Rory Harmon is going to be so fun to watch mature and grow up in a Texas uniform. Hall tries to respond. It's Belibi weak side. Right back to Fran. Fran's not even looking at the basket. Mm -hmm. Both Hull sisters try a three, and there's Belibi for another rebound. Back to Fran for the lay-in. Nice give and go. She does the work, gets the reward. You gotta jump on that right hand if you're Anna Wilson. And you could give it up. Alan Taylor, there was no switch that time, and Jones didn't get a hand up. Joanne Allen Taylor is really tough. She's been so good in the mid-range. She played well the other night, too. Had 17 in the Sweet 16 win. She's already got nine here on 50% shooting in the first half. Well, she's such a great counter to Roy Harmon, who's at the top of the scouting report. And then Joanne Allen Taylor can make every play off the bounce. Good scouting report defense right there by Audrey Warren. 
Audrey wears the Q collar around her neck for concussion prevention. She has had a history of concussions in her career. Look at Warren stuff that dribble handoff. Good cut by Hall. Beautiful play offensively. Never stopped moving her feet, and Belibi just waited for her to get loose. They've assisted on five of their seven buckets. Harmon blocked. Lacey Hall got it. Stanford looking for the lead. Backdoor cut again, and now things are humming on this end of the floor. Three baskets going backdoor in the first half. And Vic Schaefer's defense worked on that yesterday at practice. You know you're going to give up a couple. Warren, tough pass for Ebo. Did handle it initially and I think they're going to get a foul on the floor against the Cardinal this is the way Stanford likes to play you overplay them defensively they're going to cut to the best bucket good scoring cuts back door by the Cardinal Thank you very much, Al, as we check out our game track brought to you by Adidas. Uh, that's what the Stanford offense looks like so far. As Texas has uh, controlled the pace of this one, much to their liking as Warren hits the bucket. Well, Stanford's got to continue to try to space the floor and try to be able to make some cuts going back door against this overplaying one pass away defense. That's their first triple of the game. And Hull knocks it down. Angel, you were listening into that Texas huddle. Yes, Beth. Well, of course, Texas looking to fine-tune some things on the defensive end. Coach Schaefer told his group there's no room for excuses as far as getting beat back door. That's easy money for them. He's challenging his backside help as well as perimeter pressure to simply be better. Yeah, he's a little concerned right now because Stanford has knocked down their last four shots in a row, including that first three. Well, you talk about uh, turnovers and points off turnovers with eight Stanford turnovers in their 23-game win streak. According to her hoop stats, they've only averaged 12 turnovers in that 23-game win streak. Before that, they were averaging three and a half more turnovers. So that means they're going to take care of the ball, but we started at the top of the game talking about how many times they turned it over in the first matchup, which cost them the game. They have the ball, they have the lead, they do not have Cameron Brink. She's only played five minutes with two fouls in this first half. Their leading scorer. Hall will pull the trigger again. And Texas has it. We've seen dribble drive, we saw, we saw one set of horns. And they're going to go back to horns right here. Which is, they, they've got two post players on the elbows. Look for the high-low game. Warren comes all the way out top to receive. Got a whistle and a foul off the ball. And an offensive foul against Texas. Well, and here's the way Stanford is defending, Beth. I mean, they are continuing to sag and stay in the paint. They're not playing up the line, but on a closeout, they've got high hands. So if Texas doesn't hit any threes, they've only hit a couple, uh, then they're going to continue to stay in the paint, make them, force them to make shots, keep them out of the inside. Belibi able to pick it up for the garbage deuce, spins it off the window. That last foul, by the way, was the second on number five, Deanna Gaston. She stays on the court. She's got the ball for Texas. Harmon, oh, got a hand in her face. And there's the third personal foul as Gaston goes over the back.
Well, I love the change defensively that Stanford is sagging. You know, they just continue to sag in the paint because that's where their points are coming from for Texas. They have, look at the white bodies, in uh, the white jerseys in the, in the paint. That's what you got to have is in order to force Texas to the perimeter. They have hit three threes, but that's not their game. Jones, who is a known high dribbler, almost lost the handle of that one, and a reach-in foul will be called on Texas. It looks so pickable when she's dribbling up the court. She's a high dribbler. Yeah. Fouls on Ebo her first. I really don't know, I mean, unless she got called for reaching in. That's an unfortunate one for Texas. And Jones is uh, still working on her hand, her left wrist, trying to shake something off after that collision. Her second trip to the line as Cameron Brink watches. Best shot blocker. Really important in their rotations defensively. But she's got two fouls. That's why she's sitting over there. Stanford on a 10-2 run. They're up four. Final minute and a half of this first half for a spot in the final four. Warren hits for three. Well, they're already on their average. They make less than five threes a game. That's their fourth. But Tara Vandermeer is not going to make an adjustment on that, right? Because she plays the percentages. And so if you watch Stanford, they're going to have three players with two feet in the paint on most possessions defensively right now. Jones pulls up. She does a little nail work. Mary Jones now with nine points and nine rebounds already in this first half. You gotta throw it in there, she was open. Ebo, front of the rim. Here's a chance to score in transition before they get organized. Jones turns it back around. See, this is where her decision making has grown. So they're taking a bad shot or a quick shot. And then a foul off the ball. Well, and they just lost the final possession of the half. It will go over to Texas. Charge call, or a foul called on the screen. You know, Big Schaefer going to get an uh, offense on the floor right here. And that is the second foul on Haley Jones. And she goes out. Stanford hit a buzzer beater to end the first quarter. Can Texas return the favor? Here goes Harmon. She does get to the right side. Lobs it into Ebo. They try and work the mismatch and a foul called before the horn blew. And Ebo will get a couple free throws. That's a great recognition right here by Harmon. On the switch, Anna Wilson picks up the foul. This particular play to see when the foul actually occurred. D. Kantner going over there to let us know. They're going to see if the, if the foul occurred before time went off. And what how the, this might matter, too, is if there's anybody on the free throw line while she shoots them. And if there's potentially any time still on the clock. You can see the clock up at the top of the screen. Yeah, there's at least uh, uh, point two maybe. Yeah. You go clock, light, horn when you're looking at that. Take a break and be right back. So as you can see, they have put .5 seconds back on the game clock with a 30-27 Stanford lead and Texas Lauren Ebo about to take two free throws. The South Carolina Gamecocks uh, winner tonight over Creighton. The Blue Jays' Cinderella run comes to an end, and the Gamecocks are on to Minneapolis 
in search of a second national championship. As you can also see there, all the one seeds still alive and looking to advance. Carolina plays either Louisville, Michigan. The winner of our game here gets either UConn or NC State. Ebo scoreless thus far at her first trip to the stripe. I like the play call by Vic Schaefer. Trying to get some low post back to the basket. Baseline play. They haven't had any of that yet in the first half. But I'll tell you right now, I'm going to script the first play for you to start the second half. Ebo's going to get a touch. Texas just three of six from the line. Missed them both. And they will not get a second chance at it. The one seed in Spokane has the 30 to 27 lead over Texas. At the break, 20 minutes to the final four for the Cardinal or the Longhorns, and Angel has Lexi Hull. Lexi, you're very familiar with the amount of pressure that Texas applies, but how would you say that you've been able to counter it so far in the first half? I think just being as physical as they are. It's very physical out there and play through everything. Six lead changes already. You know there's a lot on the line, but how do you create some separation in the second half? I think just locking down on defense. Um, we know they like their pull-up and trying to take that away in the second half. Thanks, Lexi. Thank you. All right, the Cardinal with the lead over the Longhorns as we send you back east to the studio. The one seed Stanford with the three point lead over the two seed Texas. As we get set to start the third quarter, the winner moving on to the final four in Minneapolis next weekend. Beth Mullins along with Debbie Antonelli and Angel Gray, the three point lead for Stanford against a very tough Texas D tonight. Well, Stanford can't shake free in transition. They can't get any threes. They've only made one. So they have to be able to welcome the Texas pressure. And one way to do that is to be able to go back door. You got a ball fake, you got to find a way to score in the paint. And this has been tough right here. Nice give and go by Fran Bolivi, who scores at the rim, and then Haley Jones dribble at the defender in that Princeton concept. And Anna Wilson with a scoring backdoor cut. A terrific crowd here tonight in Spokane at the region final as we check out our first half stats brought to you by Geico. Four triples for the Longhorns, Stanford the edge on the glass, Jones and Harmon leading the way for their two teams. And uh, let's check in with Angel Gray. Coach Schaefer gave me his adjustments at half, and I said the most important thing you want to see in the first five minutes, he said, we're good, we're good. We just have to make sure that we clean some things up. We need more patience on offense defensively. He said they have to make them score over us, not by us. I mentioned also a couple of players, a big that he had in foul trouble. He looked at me, he said, a couple? Heck, my whole team is in trouble. We have to play harder while playing <laughs> smarter. Let's see if they can do it. Yeah, the big foul situation was Cameron Brink right there for Stanford. As we talked about in that first half, two personal fouls, and it's Tara's philosophy not to play Brink, who's foul prone with two fouls until putting her back in now. Well, she's done better this year because she's only fouled out of three games, but she fouled out of five last year. And Tara don't play with that, and Cameron knows it. So when you commit those fouls, you're going to the bench. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for Stanford, they've got depth up front. And it's not just the fouls that she's committed. It's the six fouls that Haley Jones has drawn to Angel's point about what Vic Schaefer says about his front line. It's Haley Jones rebounding, getting in the paint, and putting some pressure on the interior part of Texas defense. Deanna Gaston, number five in burnt orange, does start out the half on the floor with three personals. Brink, a little off balance, able to hold on and steady yourself for the basket and a foul. See, Cameron, if you could just quit fouling, this is what you could bring to the floor. I don't know how Legacy, or Lexi Hall got that pass through there. What an incredible drop-down pass right between three Texas players. Good concentration by Brick to finish. Fouls on Ebo, her second. Cameron, a 60% free throw shooter. Owner of a 20 point 20 rebound game earlier this year against Indiana the third team All-American and the Pac-12 defensive player over uh, of the year so she does it on this end of the floor as well really good shot blocker and that's a push off inside on Leah Moore uh oh Vic Schaefer here comes the jacket you know he never took it off the other night 
He always takes his jacket off at some point in the first half. Well, now he's got a couple of frontliners with three fouls. That's the third on Amo. Stanford changing their set. Haley Jones with that size. Beth can get to the paint and see over the top. Jones in and out. Brink had it. Harmon comes the other way for Texas. Contender for National Freshman of the Year honors. Rory Harmon running the show for the Longhorns. You know, I think what Tara Vanderveer is doing is when Harmon is going right, they go over the top of that middle ball screen. When she goes left, they go under. Both sides have the starting fives back in there to open up this third quarter. Hull reached for it, and is that another foul on Ebo? That is her third. Well, the activity of Brink around the rim offensively. It's not just her shot blocking ability on the other end. That is Texas fourth team foul in the first two minutes of this third quarter. The next one will have Stanford at the free throw line. Good D by Warren. Got to stuff that pinch post action. Spinning. Took her way away from the rim. Shot off the mark. Audrey Warren didn't budge on that possession. Harmon using the Ebo screen to knock it down. Under going left. Good read by Harmon to then take it back that way. Wilson for three. Skids to the far side, and this time it's an over the back on Stanford. Rory Harmon is so quick, but she's so good going right. Okay, hold it. Watch the screen right here. Watch the defender. This is a very well executed play right here by Harmon. You go underneath. She's going to make you pay. I mean, that's how talented she is, but you got to take away her strength, and her strength is going right. And that's what Tara Vanderveer is trying to do. Did not step out to help her out and get a hand up. Harmon, so good on that cross. Leans into the defender and scores. They're going to call a delay of game warning on Texas for knocking the ball out of the net after Harmon scores. A little freshman from Houston, Rory. There's her parents, Rain, uh, Rodney and Shania. Well, what a bright future for the Longhorns. Back-to-back -back trips to the Elite Eight, and they got a really good young backcourt. Let's see an adjustment by Tara Vanderveer. Second half in breaking that press. Instead of having all players up in the front trying to inbound and help get it in, it's just Haley Jones and everyone else to midcourt. you got to stretch that Texas defense out. Brink tried to tip it to herself and then knocked it off of Warren out of bounds. Tara Vanderveer reminding her to post up strong. Let's see if they get her a touch here. I think Cameron Brink is one of the top 25 players in the country. Obviously, she's proven this season. When we did our ESPN top 25 players, she was in there. First and second round. Five points, five rebounds, and that's a walk and a turnover. Number 10 for the Cardinal. Shea Holly. Valentel. Ron Harmon's got it. Wilson switches on. Brink. Defensive board. Brink working on Ebo with three fouls. Wilson and back to back travels. Well, one of the wonderful things about being out here is look at the all star cast of 
national writers. We've got USA Today, Washington Post, New York Times, The Athletic, ESPN, and the San Francisco Ooh. Chronicle here. That is fantastic covering the women's game on the national level. Continued growth as we start sending teams to the final four. South Carolina already has punched its ticket a one seed in Greensboro as Alan Taylor draws the foul. They await the winner of tomorrow's Louisville-Michigan matchup. The winner of this one will face tomorrow's winner, NC State or UConn. And Lexi Hall just picked up her third personal foul. They're starting to mount on both sides. Well, all this stoppage and lack of flow is a benefit to Texas. That would be to their advantage because that's the way they want it to be. Disruptive and dictate the shots that Stanford takes offensively. And they've done that to the mo for the most part in this game. Stanford likes to be scoring around 75, 80 points. They're well below that outlook right now. And uh, we've got you covered for the final four from Minneapolis, the national semis on Friday night, the championship game Sunday night on ESPN. We've also added all access to the practices on Saturday. ESPN wall-to-wall -wall coverage of you know, the women's final four. Look at Haley Jones directing traffic up top. 6-1, playing like a point guard. Jones pulls up at the elbow. Wilson runs it down. They have not scored in the last four minutes as Brink turns and steps away and ends that drought. you got to love a reverse pivot out of a post player. That was a beautiful look. Because you don't feel any contact, you turn and face. Harmon into the lane and one and a foul on Wilson. She is so tough with the ball in her hands. And you let her go right. And when she goes right, she can make it work in the paint. Rory Harmon so good off the bounce with contact. Going to the free throw line, we come back. Here's a look at the WBCA Coaches Trophy presented by Invesco QQQ, which will be awarded to the national championship winning coach. Dawn Staley's got a shot at it. South Carolina is into the final four. The first team to punch a ticket. We're about to punch another one here tonight in Spokane. As it's time now for our player spotlight brought to you by Sirius XM. And Rory Harmon, who was in foul trouble the other night in the Sweet 16, a much different story tonight. She has scored six of Texas's eight points here in the third quarter. And meanwhile, Cameron Brink has scored all seven of the Cardinal points here in the third as Harmon looks to complete the three-point play. She had 21 in the first matchup, Beth, when they played in November. And... Didn't have any turnovers in that game. She only has one in this one. Good hustle play by Warren. And after trailing by eight earlier in the period, they have a chance to tie it or take the lead back. Shot clock winding down and a foul with two seconds on the clock. And if that's Wilson, that's her third. This dribble drive and these Texas guards are so skilled off the bounce. They keep pressure on the Stanford defense and they get where they want off the bounce. On the other end of the floor, defensively, they dictate the shots that they want Stanford to take. It's the same story as it was back in November. The Texas guards are forcing Stanford's hand. They're creating turnovers. They're scoring at will here on the offensive side. I mean, Vic Schaefer really, in the first half, went to a couple of sets of horns, and he likes the high-low out of that. But he hasn't needed to do anything else because he's in the game as a two-seed playing the dribble drive, and Stanford can't stop it. So it's not over-coaching. It's actually excellent coaching to keep going to what works. 
10-2 run for the Horns to tie it up. Belibi. All kinds of contact on the drive. The kick out to Brink looking for the three and Cameron knocks it down. That would be Cameron Brink's ninth, tenth, counting that one of the season. She had nine coming in. She does have all ten of their points here in the third quarter. And Stanford switches to a zone. Holland jump up top. Ebo fighting for position. Brink is right there with her, gets the block. How about that switch by Tara Vanderveer? You see how the rhythm of Texas changed? Now they have to play off the pass. Uh-oh, no, she's trying to go for a heat check. <laughs> I don't know if you can heat check with only 10 on the year, but she does. I don't think so. <laughs> if tomorrow is alive for Stanford, mm -hmm. that isn't going to look good on the film yeah. session. Now can Harmon and Alan Taylor find the gaps off the bounce in this zone? Well, I love the change. Can it change the rhythm of Texas? And Tara Vanderveer doesn't play her cards in the first half, right? She didn't play any zone in the first half, Beth. They're two for two out of zone getting stops. Back-to-back -back block shots. If you know Tara Vanderveer, you know she's not playing all her cards in the first mm -hmm. half. She hasn't won 1,156 <laughs> games for nothing. And the Cardinal out of that zone scoring now at the offensive end. Great chess match between these yeah. two coaches. And have both seen their share of big moments. See the, the body language for Texas, the, the rhythm has slowed. They were so good off the bounce. It's such a great coaching adjustment. Another shot clock situation, and Warren gets the three. Well, they, that is how you beat it, though. Warren is a capable three-point threat. You get in the gap of that zone. Tough pass for Belibi to handle, and Texas takes it. Under two minutes to go in the third. Four possessions of zone. They get Ebo a touch inside and Brink with another block. Belibi looking for help. Lacey Hall. And look at Fran hustle to try and get in there for the board, but she steps out of bounds. The best shot blocker and the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. Right here, all ball. And then Belivi with a hustle. Although she stepped out of bounds. Send it to Angel. Well, ladies, Coach Vanderveer was asked about Cameron Brink's growth from just a season ago. She said she is an incredibly talented player, just great hands, runs the floor, really plays hard. But she said, you know, if a player came in perfect, what would my job be? There are things about Cam that she can improve, but defensively is her biggest jump. I would say so as well. She continues to rack up in the block department, ladies. That is the eighth block of the night for Stanford. Stanford is fourth in the nation in block shots so this is a big part of their defense remember the beginning of the game we said don't slight the stanford cardinal on the defensive end i mean they, we talk about their rhythm offensively and how well they move the ball they can guard it as well warren stepped on the sideline turns it over to stanford you know there's not a lot of space down there in that corner there's only three feet three inches and 17 wood panels. Got to have great footwork in the corner. Belibi with jump. You got to know where she is on the perimeter. Final minute. Third quarter. Final four at stake. And I think they called a foul on the jump screen. Uh, yes, that is what... Hmm. Interesting. That's her first. Oh. 
Oh, Juan lost the dribble. Excuse me, Alan Taylor. Plenty of folks playing with three fouls. So far, avoiding a fourth. Jump. Belibi able to tip it to herself. Oh, man, this is great. This is so great. Back and forth. Holding for one. She's already got one buzzer beater to end a quarter tonight. Haley Jones looking for another. And a foul. Vic Schaefer cannot believe it. He is beside himself over there. Looking out at the floor going, wow. Point four on the clock. Yeah, that is the fourth foul on Aaliyah Moore. Jones hits the first. Four tenths of a second for Texas here. There's the third free throw coming up. Cardinal with 10 of 12 at the line. Haley now with a double double. 12 points, 11 rebounds. And that'll do it for the third. A five point advantage for the one seed over the two seed. With 10 minutes to go, we'll hear from Tara on the other side of our black party. Welcome back. I'm with Coach Vanderveer. Coach, you, there was a point where you went four minutes without a bucket, but you end the quarter with 15 points. What changed and what must you build on to, in the final frame? You know, I think Cam's really helping us this quarter. Uh, we've got to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. Um, and, you know, and just knock down some shots, move the ball better. Uh, it's, it's really physical, so we just have to play through that. Thank you, Coach. All right. Well, Cameron Brink, a big third quarter after... Foul problems in the first half. As her, uh, her folks look on, and there's her godmother there to the left in uh, the, the blue, Sonia Curry, Steph's mother, and a teammate of Cameron's mom from their college days. And for Brink in that third quarter, 10 points, three rebounds, three block shots. That's why she's so valuable on the floor on both ends. You see no points in the first half. Ten third quarter points on four for five shooting. And three blocks. No, we hope you're enjoying this one. Uh, looking for our first close game of the day around the uh, men's and women's Elite Eight. Headed in that direction right now. A five-point Stanford lead. Ten minutes to go for the second spot in the final four along with South Carolina. So Texas comes up the floor against that Stanford man-to-man -man defense. They switch to start the fourth quarter. Char dropped a little 2-3 zone on him late in that third quarter and that made a difference. Brink. Offensive foul called on Cameron. That's her third. Well, no one in the house likes this call. This is an ISO at the pinch or the elbow. Did she push off? I don't think so. That's probably a no call. All right, let's see if Harmon can get it going again against the man-to-man. -man. Belibi took it right away the, from Ebo. Another, another block for Brink. May have gotten a fingertip on it. Making a big difference at that end of the floor. Jones, who's got a double-double, 12 points, 11 rebounds, one of three in double figures now for the Cardinal. Look at that Texas D push Stanford further away from the bucket and deep into the clock. Five on the clock. Hull falling down, scooped it up, won't go, and Harmon. 
exits the other way. She and Alan Taylor have combined for 26. This backcourt leading the way for Texas. They're going down on the block this time with this possession. Look for Ebo, number one. Warren and Belibi got tangled up. Good no call from D. Cantner. Along with McCole Murray and Kenneth Nash here tonight. The countdown on the shot clock. Harmon. Good Stanford possession defensively. Got to keep the dribble alive on the top of the floor. You want to stay off the sideline. Hull. The three ball has not been there tonight for the Cardinal. Now just two of 14. Similar story to their regular season loss to Texas. Warren on the drive. That's the fifth block of the second half for Cameron Brink. And the tenth for the Cardinals. Second game of our doubleheader. South Carolina beat Creighton earlier tonight. Tomorrow's doubleheader, NC State, UConn, and Louisville, Michigan. Good baseline out of bounds play for Texas for two. Really good execution. And situational offense right here as we go down, down the stretch, you can't have game slippage. You gotta make sure you screen hard, you cut hard. And there's a baseball pass. Picked off by Allen Taylor. That's the first time they've tried to go long all night. And Joanne Allen Taylor, the senior, makes a huge play. Texas does like to call themselves DBU, Debbie. Nice interception there for Joanne. Ebo couldn't handle the hot pass from Matharu. Open look, Lexi Hall rattles it in, assisted by Jones. That's the first time Stanford's gotten a skip pass in transition. And transition buckets have not come very easily tonight for either team. Rory right into Brink, who sends it back. And Stanford with numbers. Cameron calling for it. They have Jones wide open on the other side and a foul. She is erasing everything inside. Watch the sprint right here, and here comes Haley Jones down the middle of the floor. Eyes up, because you run the floor hard and wide, you're open in transition defense. Very good execution by the Cardinal in transition. Six point Stanford advantage. They will look to add to it at the line on the other side. Physically and mentally exhausted. Oh, come on, Jamie Hall, you got to get through the next six and a half minutes for the Stanford Cardinal as we take a look at Be Your Own Champion, brought to you by Champion. And the host teammate, Haley Jones, has a shot at joining this select group of multiple Final Four MVP winners. If they can keep the train rolling, Cheryl Miller and Shamiqua, D with UConn. Candace Parker won it a couple of times for Tennessee. And how about four for four for Brianna Stewart at UConn? Nobody won more than Brianna Stewart, mm. that's for sure. Her old team, the UConn Huskies, playing tomorrow night against NC State. You know, that's the first foul on Rory Harmon, and I, I like the aggressiveness Mm -hmm. Right now, and with six and a half, trying to get a steal. The decision by Tara Vandeveer proving to be a good one after Cameron Brink picked up two fouls in the first half, only played five minutes. She sat a long time. She sat a long time, and they saved her for the third quarter, and she has been a monster here in this second half for the Cardinal. Here she is with the ball, looking for a step back three. Oh, now I don't know about that. Come on now, let's not get too excited. 
right? I mean, that's you got to manage each possession right here. No game slippage. Texas is more than happy to shorten it and play at their pace. Reach-in foul on Belibi. That's her second. Haley Jones with a double-double. Cameron Brink, 10 points, six rebounds, six blocks. Watch yeah. for Joanne Allen Taylor again on this out-of-bounds play. They like to run this play right here. They scored out on the other side of the floor. Allen Taylor and Harmon have been their two primary scorers, and Rory gets a trip to the line. I like the game plan Vic Schaefer has put in place for his team. Obviously, you know they're going to play hard. That comes without worry. And the guy doesn't sleep, right? So he was up all night getting ready for this. So he knows when, when he does lay his head down on the pillow that his team is going to play hard. And he has done an excellent job of getting them to this position in the game off their defense, their tempo, their dictation on that end of the floor. And then their dribble drive has been challenging for Stanford. No question about it. Deanna, That's the story of the game right now. Deanna Jackson, Durrett, Calamity McIntyre, April Phillips, that coaching staff. He's also got his daughter Blair on the bench with him. They were a good father-daughter combo when she was playing at Mississippi State and played for the national championship. They have not inverted Haley Jones to the block all game. Another late game, in-game adjustment by the best who's ever done it in Tara Vanderveer with the most wins. Well, Jones's name, seven-point lead. They've been up by as many as eight. And Ebo called for the foul on the screen, and that's number four. So Ebo and Aaliyah Moore with four each. You know what? This is not just a single ice bath game, but this is a double ice bath mm. game. You're going to need two to recover from this one. Looks like an issue with uh, Haley Jones. Some blood they are tending to. There is the foul trouble for that Texas front line. So I'm watching for Tara Vanderveer to go right back to Haley Jones on the block. With this smaller lineup on the floor with four guards and Ebo. One of those small guards is going to have to guard Haley Jones again. Oh, look, Vic Schaefer says, no, -uh, no way. Let me get uh, let me get some more size out here. He's thinking the same way. <laughs> Good count. Right? Absolutely. He gets the 6-1 freshman Moore back on the court. She'll check Belibi. I'm looking for some help mm. right here. Harmon immediately switches over to the, whoever's bringing the ball up court to try and pick it. And an offensive foul on Belibi as Warren takes the charge, and that is Fran's third. Audrey Warren just simply knows how to play. Look at the rotation outside the restricted area. You referee the defense on that play. She obtains legal guarding position. Five minutes to go for a spot in the Final Four. Stanford, your defending national champs. Texas looking for their first trip back since 2003 as Warren hits for two. Quick trip really encouraging his team to get a stop. Brink faces up. Lexi Hole. Right. Don't even alive. think about it, Brink. Getting ready to fire that from three again on that offensive rebound. That just has not been dialed in tonight. Three of 16 from outside the line for the Cardinal. Five on the shot clock. Lacey Hole looking to create. Good defense for Texas. Well, they like to say Texas fight. They're showing it right now against the top seed Cardinal.
take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance. Cameron Brink, a huge second half after the first half foul trouble, Debbie. I mean, she's been terrific. She has been effective on both ends of the floor, even hitting her 10th triple of the season. You gotta love her activity. She's got six rebounds to go with that as well. Making some big shots right here for the Cardinal. Here comes some full court pressure by Stanford, which I'm just gonna say, Rory Harmon is untrappable, unflappable. He's a one person press breaker. She did just that. Foul on Brink, and that'll get more to the line. I'm, I'm sort of surprised that Tara Vanderveer opened up the floor like that for the Texas speed. Because even though Rory handled it and made a good decision, Texas was able to get into a set that allowed Moore to take advantage of her size on the block. That is Brink's fourth foul. Texas, meanwhile, just eight of 15 at the free throw line. Eight makes and seven misses. As Stanford tries to get Brink out with Ashton Prechtel set to check in. Vic Schaefer going with both his freshmen on the floor late in the game. Stanford counters with experience on the floor that won a national championship last year. So Brink goes out. Let's see how long Tara keeps her though over there. Angel, what you got for us? Well, Debbie, you mentioned earlier the help you'd look for as a Stanford guard. Well, Coach Vandeveer agrees. She said if they run their high set, she wants them to execute sooner to relieve the point guards at the top of the key for Maury Harmon or Joanne Allen Taylor pressure. Offensive foul called on Stanford. And Texas will get it right back. Tara Vanderveer usually doesn't react like that. She is not happy about that call. That was Harmon defending on Lacey Ho. Warren, nice dish inside and a foul. But now the Longhorns, they, they gotta start making more free yeah. throws here. They're getting to the line. Yep. Their pull-up jump shot percentage in this game is better at the free throw line than their free throw percentage. That is the fourth foul now on Belibi. So two players in foul trouble on both sides. Now you know the full court pressure is coming. That's the number right now at the free throw line. Gets them both. That allows them to set up the press. Jones will try and break it now with Warren on her. Two point game, three and a half minutes to go. Winner is on to Minneapolis. And a matchup in the final four with NC State or UConn. You better open seven on the shot clock. You better here. ball fake some of that right there, because Texas is over. I mean, they've been overplaying the passing lanes, not just a hand in the passing lane. Sometimes they've got their whole body in the passing lane. Keep in mind, there's supposed to be freedom of movement in this game as well. Recto. Hoist one up to beat the shot clock buzzer. And a chance to tie or take the lead for Texas with three minutes to go. I mean, does Roy Harmon look like a freshman out there? Because she does not to me. The poise and the maturity. Warren pulls up. In and out. And a foul on Audrey. That's just the fourth team foul. No free throws yet. This is so similar to the game that was played in November at Stanford. 
which Texas won because they made plays late and their ball pressure continued to wear down. At that time, Stanford wasn't sure who their point guard was. Second game into the season after not having, or after Keanu Williams graduating, who was their leading scorer. Eight of the nine are back from last year's championship team. The point guard, the lone departure. And that's been an issue. Late in games for Stanford as Lexi Ho gets an and one. Big mom and dad love it. This is some toughness right here. You turn the corner and you see a little bit of daylight to the paint. You got to go hard knowing the contact's coming. Third on Allen Taylor. Lacey and Lexi from right here in Spokane. Central Valley High School, Lexi twice. The Washington Prep State Player of the Year. One of the goals of Vic Schaefer always is to make it a low assist game. And they've done that, just seven assists for the Cardinal. They've made them play off the bounce all night. Harmon gets it back. Moore, the two freshmen team up for a basket. Under two minutes to go. And another trip to the free throw line for Lexi Holt. Stanford's 12 of 14 tonight. And Hull, two for two. That's the fourth foul now on Joanne. Both teams now in the bonus for the last two minutes. Coming up tonight after the game on Sports Center, Michael Eaves and Kevin Connors will break it down. They'll check in with Monica McNutt for all the latest from the women's tournament as well as the men's tournament, their final four now set. Both sides have timeouts. The possession arrow is with Stanford, and remember in the women's game, if you've got a timeout late, you can call it to advance the ball to midcourt. A lot of times, Vic Schaefer doesn't like to advance the ball because of his team speed. Harmon hangs, can't hit. Rebound, Lacey Hull. Got to get it over. Lacey has not come out of the game. The full 40 minutes for Hull. You got to keep the ball in the middle third right here, off the sideline, out of the corners. I don't like that ball on the sideline if you're Stanford. You've got to be careful, Beth, because they'll run and jump. They'll trap. They're switching to steal. It's a very aggressive. We've been saying how aggressive it is all, all game, but it gets more aggressive at this point. Foul was called on Harmon. And Haley Jones back to the line, six of seven. And as her family looks on, the junior out of Santa Cruz. The National Player of the Year coming out of high school. Already an All-American a couple of times. The National Championship ring. And then trying to get back to another Final Four. And Vic Schaefer getting Matharu back on the floor. I mean, she had a huge fourth quarter the first time these two teams met. She had 17 in the fourth quarter. He gets her on the floor right here for offense. We got a two possession game into the final minute in Spokane. Matharu gets the switch, the drive deflected. Harmon open three. Weak side, Lacey Hull and Haley Jones will take her time and a reach in foul. Hard foul. When Matharu turned the corner, she was open for a jumper. Here's the foul. Play on the ball.
Monique and Patrick, her parents, cheering her on. See, now this is going to be interesting here. Vic Schaefer will elect to use a timeout to advance the ball. Sometimes he likes to use his speed up the floor. And that is the fifth personal foul on Joanne Allen Taylor. So the Longhorns lose a key cog in the backcourt. The senior from Houston, who is hoping her teammates can get her another day of practice in another game in Minneapolis. I mean, look at the emotion. What a game. What a terrific job she did here the other night against Ohio State. And Haley Jones just makes it a three possession game. Free throws, a key statistic, then a big advantage in that department for Stanford. Seven point lead. And there's the timeout for Texas, 35.3 to play. Lexi Hall and Haley Jones have scored all 13 points for Stanford here in the fourth quarter. And Jamie Hall, who's been wearing the mic for us tonight. When I'm watching my son play, I can't even speak, let alone clap, stand up and cheer, any of that. Husband it's, Jason, Grandma, Hull right there to the left. It's so emotional for parents as well. And, and the Hulls are seniors. Obviously, they're home. It's a special moment for their family. How special could it be? We'll find out in the next 35 seconds. They have matched their biggest lead of the night, 58-50. All right, you're looking for a direct feed to the post if that's available. You don't necessarily need a three here. You've got to score quickly. If the three is the best option, you take it. And that's your best three-point shooter, Mataro. Air ball. Believe he's got it. You got a foul. Harmon also almost got the steal, and now Stanford can work some clock. And the foul was 16.9. And the Cardinal fans on their feet. I'm thinking Vic Schaefer gave it a shot from three. They didn't score. They didn't foul. Stanford at the line tonight, 85%. Texas, 61%. With seven misses. They've been side by side atop the poles for most of the season. They're getting their South fans. Carolina and Stanford, and they appear to be the first two that could punch the ticket to the final fours. South Carolina is already headed to Minneapolis, a winner over Creighton tonight. And Stanford 16 seconds away from joining them on the other side of the bracket. Not what they wanted here, though. Texas, a chance for points. With the clock stopped as Fran Bolibi has fouled out. Seven points, 11 rebounds for Fran tonight. <laughs> 63 days on the road last year during COVID for Stanford Cardinal on their way to a national championship. Tara Vandeveer has talked many times to us about how much it's been different with fans and how much they've enjoyed it this year, and her fans have enjoyed watching them play. Lattimore missed two more free throws. And a timeout, Stanford. Well, they're going to advance the ball so they don't have to go against that full court pressure. <laughs> they've about had enough of that. And how about Vic Schaefer, Beth? Ahead of schedule with the Texas Longhorns. Last year, they get to the Elite Eight. This year, again to the Elite Eight. What an incredible coaching job he has done. 
with his team. Yep. Back-to-back -back trips for Texas. Back-to-back -back trips, obviously, for Stanford as they look to head back to Minneapolis. And a shot at going back-to-back -back for national championships. Tara looking for her fourth uh, on the farm. And uh, they, they got the job done when they had to with their possessions and terrific balance again. Yeah, I thought they did a, a marvelous job of not having a primary ball handler. Everyone initiating and facilitating on the top. I thought switching to the zone was critical in the second half. I thought that gave them a, a chance to change the rhythm of the game. And she's a master at adjusting in game. And, and she didn't play all her cards in the first half. I also thought inverting Haley Jones to the block was important as well as an offensive adjustment. They get a five second violation on the Cardinal. And it'll go back to Texas. Well, now you got to get a three. See, Vic Schaefer is going to call timeout. He's got Mataro on the floor, so he's going to probably drop something for her to get a three. Gives us a chance to talk about tomorrow night's doubleheader. Two more teams will be headed to the Final Four. South Carolina winner earlier tonight. Tomorrow night on ESPN, the doubleheader Louisville, Michigan, and NC State UConn. Michigan playing in their first ever Elite Eight against the Cardinal. Can the ACC send two teams tomorrow night to the Final Four? NC State at UConn, or in uh, Bridgeport, I should say. Uh, oops. Louisville is an elite level defense. Yes, they are. They are very good. Jeff Walls has been to three Final Fours already with that program. He's got a balanced attack with Emily Anxler and Kiana Smith and Haley Van Lift, who has played very well in the NCAA tournament. And then in the bottom part of that bracket, NC State, the one seed in Bridgeport against the two seed. Now, you know, the two seed's favored in that one. Uh, yeah, how good can UConn be with, uh, you know, their full complement of players? Paige Beckers is back. AZ Fudd has picked up. Everybody's picked up their game for the Huskies once they got healthy. I thought NC State did a lot of standing around against Notre Dame in their win, and that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And UConn's going to change the, the rhythm of NC State because UConn plays fast. And so NC State's going to have to play fast to be able to contend. Warren wants the three, gets a look, skids off the front of the rim. And Vic Schaefer says, do not foul. And the Stanford Cardinal will have a chance to defend their national championship. They are on to the final four, 59 to 50. The Cardinal win it. Fifteenth time they are headed to the Final Four. And last year's most outstanding player, Haley Jones, leads them there. 18 points, 12 rebounds tonight. Cameron Brink, 10 points, 6 rebounds, 6 blocks. Lexi Hull led all scorers with 20. What incredible toughness by the Stanford Cardinal. What great in-game adjustments by one of the great teachers in the history of our game, the all-time wins leader, Tara Vandeveer. And what great fight in Texas. That was a complete competitive 40 minutes of basketball. Texas had cut the lead down, uh, deficit down to two with three and a half minutes to go. And then Stanford outscored them 9-2 to to close it out. And they celebrate in Spokane. And half the field is set in Minneapolis. South Carolina is there. Stanford is there. Will it be all chalk? Two more one seeds take the court tomorrow. Can Michigan get there for the very first time? Can UConn return for the 14th year in a row? It's been an amazing run for the Huskies. 
And let's get it over to Angel. Thanks, Beth. Well, you get the confetti, the hat, and the t-shirt. The trip to the Final Four once again, but it was hard fought. This is a battle. 46 fouls called, physical game, but how did you guys persevere? I mean, we knew it was going to be a tough game. Texas is a great team, and they're great defensively, so we knew we had to try to throw that bunch, just like we did on Friday. So to come out and be physical and play with them after that loss in November, it, it feels great. It feels great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, let's talk about the leadership of this group. You and Lexi scored all points in the fourth quarter. The leadership that it took and the mindset, that takeover mentality you had, describe it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's everybody out there on the court. I think Lacey stepping in her role as full, full general this year has been amazing. I think she's done a great job, and she's finding me and Lexi, I think everybody started making really good decisions down the stretch. We're finding the high hand. Lexi got that huge and one, got so hyped up. We were hitting our free throw, so it was just great to see that everybody can step up in those big moments. And let's talk about the growth of this team since the first time you saw Tech. Texas. You said there were a lot of adjustments that needed to be made. It was a wake-up call for you guys. How would you assess how this team is now going into the Final Four? I mean, I think everybody can see we're a completely different team than that November team. And I think we're peaking at the right time right now. I think we're hitting our shots. We're finding the high hand. We're doing all the right things. But I think we're also physical. We're being gritty. You know, these down-to-the-wire games, we're able to hold it off. We're a really cohesive unit, which I think just plays to why we're winning. Well, have fun in Minneapolis. We'll see you there. Thank you. See you there. Beth. Thanks, Angel. Well, the Stanford Cardinal joins South Carolina at the Final Four. South Carolina on one side of the bracket. They'll play Louisville or Michigan. That game is tomorrow night at 9 Eastern on ESPN. And Stanford will be watching at 7 Eastern tomorrow. NC State and UConn gets the night underway. For our entire crew here, thanks so much for being with us in Spokane. I'm Beth Mowens, Debbie Antonelli, Angel Gray. 59-50, Stanford to the final four.